No? All right. So we are in Satnam Yoga and I'm talking to Karam Paul. And what's your position here? I'm the director at Satnam the Yoga. Director. Yes. All right. So what brought you here? Hmm. What brought me to Chicago? To that place, to that state of mind. To the state of mind. Um, I teach and practice Kundalini Yoga. Um, it's a practice that's very dear to me. It's a practice that has changed my life. And I think just from there, it naturally evolved. I've always been a people person. Yeah. Um, so I've always had this kind of say gift but it's just a natural knack of bringing people together um, yes. so bringing people together is what I do and I love doing it so that's why I'm so uh, do you feel energies when you did, did you start feeling energies how did it come to you mm. I've always been sensitive mm -hmm. um, I've always been sensitive and I've always been really curious mm -hmm. um, I think it's, it's probably since I've been a kid I was curious I've always been in love with nature and love with vibes and just feeling and who were your teachers um who are my teachers uh, my teacher is yogi bhajan um yogi bhajan is who brought kundalini yoga from the east to the west back in the late 60s um i've had so many teachers so many yoga teachers um i've sat in satsangs and and listen to many people but he's probably my main my main inspiration can you tell a little bit introduce to people who don't know what it is what is kundalini yoga kundalini is the energy that lies at the base of your spine kundalini energy or kundalini um, yoga is the technology that allows that spirit to rise uh, one of our friends had just spontaneous kundalini awakening he is a sports person and he it just happened to him do you have any advice to him what to do with it uh we get this question a lot here um when it happens or if people are freaked out um, i say just ground yourself drink some tea take a cold shower um, walk with bare feet um, and so it happens sometimes, but if you just direct it and know that it's just your body processing something, then I think it's fine. When you do your work, do you feel guided? Yes, definitely. Uh, definitely. That is, that is for sure. Um, this, you know, everyone's a little, a little bit jittery when you start to teach a big class, but um, there's a tune-in point. Uh, there's a tune-in point that happens and it's definitely not me. Um, it's definitely the collective, but it's something that is flowing through me. How do you recognize the guidance? How do I recognize the guidance? Ah, good question. Because everything just plateaus out. The room becomes more still. Um, my senses are heightened. I become a little bit more aware. Um, um, I'll be, I'm able to sense the room a little bit more to see where they are in terms of what, while I'm teaching them. Uh, you know, I get all those wonderful energy healing, healing feelings like hands tingling yes, or yes, heart yes. chakra opening yes, and yes, those yes. beautiful things. So, yeah. Yeah, tingling is, yeah, the key. Um, and when you're outside of the class, when you do your cashier's work and um, answer the calls, do you feel guidance too? Hmm, that is a different project. That is a whole different project. Um, that is definitely where I need a little bit of training. It's hard for me to stay focused behind the desk and checking people in. I My spirit wants to just socialize and be friendly, but... Um, there is another part of this project that um, I definitely have to mind, and that's the organization and the money has to be balanced or my managers get all mad at me at the end of the night. So, yeah, there's, I don't know if I feel guided when I'm doing that. <laughs> do, you, do you have examples that people have been guided to your place? All the time. Um, Sometimes, uh, the other day, there was a woman that said, 
I don't, it was the, at the last healing circle, in fact, um, she said, Karampal, I don't know how I'm here right now. I have so many things to do, but my car just drove here. <laughs> That's the first time I hear my car just yeah, drove here. Very, very sweet, but the, 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 the her, you know, her expression was very sincere and it was like she was really kind of baffled on how she got here. She's like, I have so much to do, but I'm here because I need to be here. Um, and then there are people that really take the time out to, you know, carve that space in their life for themselves once a month and they come so that they can get kind of like a, a tune up, we call it, or just um, just to hang out with friends. You know, a lot of people here aren't even receiving healing. They're just here to make new friends and hang out with old ones. So it's really beautiful. Yeah, that's a wonderful crowd. Yes, mm. wonderful crowd. Um, tell me more about that crowd, how it happened to be here, what created it? This place is I swear, it is a vortex or something. I mean, there was a there's a big hole in this, the middle of our street, and we were all laughing um, that the mothership was going to come out of the <laughs> ground. Um, somehow, people find this place. Somehow, some way, like I I think it's a different. Mil I think there's millions of pathways on how people get here, but for some reason, they get here, they stick, and it almost feels like they've come home. Yes. Um, and uh, I think as um, being kind of the mama bird of Satnam, um, when you love from that place of just accepting and having people have a little bit of ownership and let their creativity shine and let them handle certain aspects of this place, everybody feels like this is home. So everybody handles it, takes care of it like it's home. And then everybody welcomes people to it like it's home. So yes. um, that's probably um, what I can say is that I have a lot of help. Absolutely. So I, I'm organizing a Reiki, Reiki school and I also feel guided because the students just being guided to our classes. We always have just right amount of students for the class, not too many, not too little. And, and everybody tells a story how they have been brought and I mean, you see the guidance just, just like that. Tell me about the challenges, how organizational challenges, how you shift between the spiritual and the business, and the spiritual and the business. How how does it? How do you handle it? I have um, I have a few advisors. Um, I've I've had a jewelry business before. I've owned a hair salon for about uh -huh. 20 years, so I've got the business side down. Um, bringing the spiritual world and the business side of it it's just it, you have to uh, you know and there's no way that you're not gonna let this thing happen right this this thing is bigger than all of us it's it's gonna happen regardless if I drop the ball or not but how smoothly it's run and how successfully it's run um, really determines um, is really determined in, in the people in the core of the business keeping their lights bright. And when I say that is that everyone stays on their practice. Everyone that works at Satnam is encouraged to practice 20 hours a week, if not more. Everyone has a regular practice at home. Um, all of these people make it, um, make it a point to take care of themselves so that they they, when they're serving here, can take care of everyone else. Uh -huh. So I think that's a big part of the recipe is that everyone that has, everyone that works here, everyone that's behind that desk or everyone that picks up the phone when you call Satnam is definitely um, living heart-centered. Tell me about the hiring process. I have real trouble. I want everybody in. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, you know, hiring process, whoa. I have to say that that is so, it's 70% intuition. Um, if I'm not sure, I'll observe. I'll do a lot of observing. I'll have a cup of tea. I will uh, give them a shot and have them teach a class and just, just kind of see what's going on. Um, Hiring process, what I can say, I don't know how it happens. We've been very lucky. Um, but what I, what I 
can definitely say is that uh, the process kind of takes care of itself and if anyone does come um, with less than beautiful intentions um, I don't have to do anything mm -hmm. they just it just doesn't stick mm -hmm. it just doesn't stick I definitely believe that this place is guided and protected absolutely now how do you so it's like a flame you put some wood in the fire and the fire burns but you, you don't put too much wood so it doesn't stop how do you keep the borders how do you guard it from becoming too big or too diluted what do you do for that oh i don't know i i think the more the merrier but i get your point you know my my teacher yogi bhajan used to say that there's a fire right there's a fire and and you could use it um you can use it to cook for you or it could burn your house down mm -hmm. and um I think as long as we all stay in our, as long as we, how do I say this, as long as, as long as we keep our, our light bright, no one, people get it. They're, they're undefined boundaries. You know, I don't have to say it. We don't have to say it. And um, people know when they're when they're crossing the line. Uh -huh. um, I, I think that this place is high energy, and it's all of these things that are unexplained, and it's a beautiful thing. But there's this, there's this, there's something here that just deflects um, when it's too much. Um, and I never take on more than I can handle. I never take on more projects than I have enough staff for. Um, if I'm if I've got 10 people doing this and I've got three people doing this and I have 13 employees I'm done I can't I can't do anymore so um, there is a point that I just you know you just have to start saying no yes. and you, mind, right? <laughs> you just have to say no or you could say later yeah. is fine later is totally fine yeah. is you know the opportune time is is okay I've met you this is a beautiful thing that's a ch that's a moment to cherish like the meeting when you meet somebody when you come into contact with somebody that's a light that like I know right away if this person has something to share with my community like oh, I want you here I want everyone to learn from you yeah of course but there is also um, there's also the um, doing it with with grace, yes. um, doing it where you can dedicate your entirety to it so that it can be beautiful, right? So I rather wait when I have time to focus and do it right than to speed it through and just get it done. Right? So what do you do when you feel depressed or the whole group feels depressed? When the whole group feels depressed? I don't think I've ever seen that. <laughs> I don't think that happens here. Um, when I when I get depressed, um, I, I could say that I don't have really depressing depressing days. Um, I have a lot of ways to self-regulate. Uh, I practice yoga and I meditate. Um, so I don't think I maybe in my past I had bouts of it that I, I don't really deal too much with it. But um, when I am tapped out and I'm feeling like life is a little heavy. I take a lot of naps. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do too. And I talk to friends and I laugh. Uh huh. Smile. Yeah. Right. Yeah. First thing you just smile, no matter what. Yeah. That's right. You smile. You laugh. Yeah. Do a little yoga. You breathe a little deeper. You call your mom. You uh, will. Right there. You go. The, and light, light. the day. Call your mom. <laughs> um, so you dealt with hair for 20 years. Hair is something magic, right? It's an organ of intuition, right? Yes. What is it? It's an extension of your prana. Uh, it's an extension of your prana. Um, I just feel like it's just, it's like a, it's like my arm or my leg. When I feel that, like recently, there were like political events and a lot of sadness coming from elsewhere, which wasn't mine, I cut my beard. I just like hair was too much hair. Let's just do bold and uh, and not to absorb anything. What did it do to you? For me, it was a symbol. I just want to disconnect. I want to be in my my space, not being intruded with some nonsense. Got it. Yeah. 
I've seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> seen that before. <laughs> All right. Do you do you? Oh, okay. The simple miracles, like today, a uh, symbol of uh, Gabriel just fell down when we was start, started start speak, talking, talking about Gabriel. Yeah. Anything like that? Did you see any? Uh, spirits, angels, aliens coming in, like, I think it happens every day to you, right? <laughs> I think I meet a lot of aliens every day. That's definitely, there are, um, there are people here from other, other lives, I believe, um, that aren't from this plane. Uh, I don't know if I get, I don't know if I get so many visions, but, um, phone calls? Computer images? Yeah, oh, of course, everyone does, right? Um, I get downloads. Um, I, I'll see flashes of things, definitely. Um, some days I just wake up and I discover I shifted to a new world and many things change. Like I promised something to someone or someone promised to some, some of something to me and it's all wiped out. Do you see that shifting now? That it's that everything is wiped out? It's like a different world. I just come, like everything is a little bit different. Like I just shifted from this reality to a parallel where everything is different. It's kind of like walking in here, right? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I'd say so. I, 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 love, I love when that happens. <laughs> yeah, you, you take it easy, right? You take it easy. All right, so we are a community, and Brian is from that community visiting me from elsewhere. We are an online community of human colony. We channel aliens and spirits. Our angels, our favorite is Metatron and Gahil. Mm -hmm. And we had um, visits of uh, Jesus and Buddha. So we, and John Lennon. We're really thankful for John Lennon's visit. So, so do, you, do you channel? No, you don't channel I like don't. that. I don't. Myself. Um, do you have any words for us? Any wisdom words for us? Any advice for us? Any advice? God, I think you guys are ahead of the game, aren't you? <laughs> You're like, we channel galactic languages. Do you have any advice for us? Yeah, do you speak galactic languages? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I wish I did. But I don't. What about your shamanic ancestry? Are you, are you from, from certain uh, shamanic ancestry? Um, no, I don't have a... I don't have, uh, in terms of like spirit animals and things like this, like journeying, I've played with it, yes. So you mentioned that you get goosebumps and heart chakra opening. What other physical sensations which you, which you get when you feel certain guidance or first certain presence? How does it feel? When I feel guided, um, I, I feel really grounded. Mm -hmm. I feel really grounded and um, I'm, not, I'm not guessing. It's really, it's really coming from, it's really coming from a place that is, is knowing. All right, so uh, let's do f final thing. So thank you very much. You. It was, it was a pleasure to take interview, and I'm really thankful for, uh, for that place. Yeah, I was uh, welcomed here, and I met nice friends, and had wonderful yeah. experiences. I should, I should, yeah, I should, eventually, yes. So, thank you very much, and thank you for sharing your, uh, your light. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on and your show. I wish you a wonderful uh, journey. Yes. Visit Satnam when you're in Chicago. Okay.